She was the first Chinese-American woman to serve in a U.S. presidential cabinet. Now Elaine Chao is being nominated to serve as the next U.S. Secretary of Transportation. Hello, I'm Arun Naidu in Washington, D.C., and this is The Heat. U.S. President-elect Donald Trump is adding some diversity to his cabinet with the nomination of Elaine Chao as U.S. Secretary of Transportation. Chao is Chinese-American with an extensive record in the U.S. government, having served two other U.S. presidents. As CCTV's Jessica Stone reports, Chao has often spoken about the importance of U.S.-China relations. Elaine Chao is no stranger to politics. She served U.S. President George H.W. Bush as Deputy Secretary of Transportation and President George W. Bush as his Secretary of Labor. Four years ago, she also campaigned for former Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney. She spoke to CCTV America at that year's Republican National Convention. I believed in limited government. And I believed in lower taxes. I believed in quality education. In recent years, Chow has leaned heavily on her Chinese heritage, working with her philanthropist father to build schools in China and to promote educational exchanges between American and Chinese students. The U.S.-China relations is one of the most important bilateral relationships in the world today. Like China, the U.S. is poised to make major investments in its infrastructure. Donald Trump has pledged to spend $1 trillion to build new roads, bridges and airports. A Secretary Chow would likely play a key role in getting that spending approved by lawmakers. That could put her at odds with her husband, Mitch McConnell. He is the Republican leader in the U.S. Senate and has put other issues well ahead of infrastructure on the Senate priority list. While it is unclear how much of Trump's proposed funding would come from the federal budget, McConnell is a well-known obstacle to increased government spending. But in choosing Chow to be his chief promoter on infrastructure spending, Trump could get leverage over reluctant Republicans, including McConnell. And infrastructure spending is a key area of agreement between Trump and Democrats in Congress. The next U.S. Secretary of Transportation may need to work closer, though, with Democrats to address other issues, too, like how and where to deploy commercial drones and how to regulate the use of self-driving cars on U.S. roads. Jessica Stone, Washington. Joining us now in our Washington, D.C. studio is Norman Mineta. He served as U.S. Secretary of Commerce and U.S. Secretary of Transportation during the Clinton and Bush administrations. From Chicago, we're joined by Frank Wu. He is a distinguished professor at the University of California, Hastings College of Law, and the chairman of the Committee of 100. Also with us is Chilling Tong. She is the founder and CEO of the International Leadership Foundation right here in Washington, D.C. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Mr. Secretary, let me start with you. You are the son of immigrants to the United States, a champion of civil rights. What do you make of Elaine Charles' nomination to be Secretary of Transportation? I think it's a great nomination. Uh, she's uh, got a great background uh, in service in the government, in the private sector, as well as the nonprofit world. She, um, when she was head of United Way, she turned the United Way around. And... Um, with her business background, uh, education at Harvard, uh, and with, uh, you know, her dad is a great philanthropist. Her mother also is very dedicated to education. And in fact, there's a building named after uh, Elaine's mother at Harvard. So she's the only woman whose name is on a building, as well as the uh, first Asian American <clears throat> at Harvard University. So, but Elaine it's herself is well suited because she was Deputy Secretary of Transportation under Elizabeth Dole. So, and she was the longest serving uh, Secretary of Labor. So she comes well equipped to handle the job. All right, and Mr. Secretary, she, uh, you've actually worked with Elaine Chow. Very um, much so. Looking at the current makeup of this incoming new administration, what would she bring to it? Well, first of all, uh, her own background. You know, everyone says, well, she's Mitch McConnell's husband. Well, she could have been Mitch <laughs> Jones's husband, Mitch Smith's uh, hus uh, wife, rather, mm -hmm. because she has her own reputation on, on her own. Sometimes I think uh, he ought to be known as 
Elaine Chow's husband. <laughs> Schilling, put this nomination in some kind of perspective for us. Um, how significant is the nomination of Elaine Chow, uh, not just for minorities, but for women as well? Oh, absolutely. You know, first of all, I'm so honored on the panel with the Secretary Minada. When we have seen this kind of thing, we're just so excited. And, uh, you know, Secretary, as you mentioned, uh, served on the two president as a, a cabinet secretary for transportation mm -hmm. and commerce. And now we have women uh, doing the same thing. For me, when because uh, uh, I'm a Republican, so people ask me, you know, especially from immigrant and minority community, they are curious what's the direction of Trump administration is going to. And I told them, look at that. You know, South Carolina governor, you know, Nikki Haley, as ambassador to UN, and now we have a secretary, you know, as a transportation secretary, and also Seema Verma as a, a director of a, a center of a Medicaid. And also we have a Deborah Wang Young will be a chairwoman of SEC. And look at that. I just feel that's very significant for all communities. Because some candidate, they can say something, but after get, they get elected, they wouldn't care about us. So like uh, Elaine Chow's appointments and others, because herself has tremendous record of achievements. But most importantly, I think the Trump administration reached out to the brilliance and will to give mm. them important post. Okay, let's bring Frank in. He's in Chicago. And Frank, you are the chairman of one of the biggest uh, Chinese organizations here in the United States, the Committee of 100. What has Elaine Chow brought to the Chinese-American community in the U.S.? Well, uh, we are very proud. Uh, the group that I had uh, seeks to build bridges. Uh, C100 is all about uh, Chinese Americans as leaders, uh, knowing both American culture and Chinese culture and being able to reach out. And I think when we uh, look at the career of uh, this outstanding candidate, someone uh, with uh, just a vast experience, both government and private sector, we see those same traits, that bridge building. For everyone who's Chinese American, you learn that it doesn't matter who you are, what generation, where you came from, whether you're assimilated or not, what language you speak at home, you have to build bridges. Because when people look at you, they expect that you will know a little something about China. So uh, the choice of Chow, I, I think, is just a fantastic choice. Uh, it shows this opportunity to build bridges uh, to Asian Americans, to Chinese Americans. So that's good in terms of politics here. And it's an opportunity uh, to show that uh, there's understanding of U.S.-China ties and their significance within the cabinet. Mr. Secretary, you served as Secretary of Transportation in the Bush cabinet. Uh, well, of course, times change, circumstances change. But if Ms. Chow is confirmed by Congress, what are the kinds of unique challenges she will face in that position? Well, first of all, <clears throat> because the president has talked about the trillion dollars right. in infrastructure, the big issue is going to get the financing for that program. And uh, so she'll have to be working with the House and Senate uh, Senate uh, Finance Committee and the and with her House Ways and Means Committee <laughs> and her husband. A lot of pillow talk, I think, uh, will have to be engaged there <laughs> to get things done. So in 1992, as uh, the Secretary told us just a few moments ago, Ms. Chow took charge of the uh, United Way of America. That's a very big charitable organization in the country. There was a lot of controversy at the time over the organization's finances, over the man who led it at that time. But she restored order. She cut staff. Um, she put the finances in order. What, what did she bring to that? Well, I think uh, no matter what kind of job Secretary Chow is taking, she takes very, very seriously. Right. I have known her for 20 years. Not only United Way, but the Keith Peace Corps, where she worked for transportation and the labor, you know, Secretary of Labor, she always put her efforts. She wants things so perfect. And that she, you know, the most importantly, when she doing all this mainstream work, she always thinking about the Asian American community too. You know, like a United Way, she cut her salary and that she herself as a great example to people know, you know, look, we're doing the nonprofit organization. So let's just put the priority first. And she also she's a very good communicator. She clearly communicates with her employee, you know, how to make the priority. 
I remember when she worked for Department of Labor, she said very clear what she wants to do. But all importantly, she put Asian American community as the priority. She put a, a big event conference, like an annual opportunity conference. She invited about thousands of uh, uh, companies to participate to understand uh, government rule and regulation. And also, she hosts the uh, uh, Asian Pacific Federal Summit and uh, have to uh, share uh, with all, have all the Asian employee, federal employee, to participate, to understand how they can get promoted. So I think when people work for, for her, they feel they can get a reward, because as long as their hard work, you know, she will recognize all their good efforts. So I think that's why United Way could be so successful under her leadership. All right, Frank, if we look at the relationship between the United States and China, it's one of the most important relationships in the world, and here we have Elaine Cha, who's serving in the cabinet. Is it likely that President Trump, when he becomes president, will seek her advice uh, more than just advice on trains and planes, but also on improving that relationship, making it stronger, the relationship between the U.S. and China? Uh, we certainly hope so. Uh, she is a qualified, knowledgeable, well-versed. Uh, she really knows this subject. So this is someone who has both uh, the real technical expertise and competence in the fields that she's worked in, plus this family history and background uh, that she brings to bear. And, and that's so important, just that perspective to not have prejudice, to be more sympathetic, to have some understanding of culture, language, history. You can't quite measure how important that is, uh, but I think it, it will certainly be very significant. And uh, very few people will have access at that level and also this type of background about China. So it, it's just invaluable. Mr. Secretary, uh, there's lots of talk about investment in infrastructure, lots of money involved in this. So looking ahead, Elaine Chao is going to play a key role, uh, not just in the cabinet, but in the economic future of the country as well, wouldn't she? Oh, absolutely, because no matter what you talk about, hmm. transportation is really at the base of it, right. whether it's whatever you eat, with it, whatever we wear, uh, transportation is a vital part of our economy. So it is very important that the infrastructure program move ahead because to a very great extent it's been neglected and so we need the financing to have it move forward because the gasoline tax as we know it now is insufficient going into the highway trust fund to finance all the projects that are needed. Uh, Chairman, just one quick note on um, Elaine Chao's personality, if I could put it that way. Both, you know, Elaine Chao and her family, uh, her father, were very uh, big on philanthropy. In, uh, she, in fact, runs the philanthropy program at uh, the Heritage Foundation. Um, what values does she bring to that? You know, uh, I have to say Secretary Chao is a very, very charming person. Mm -hmm. When she walks into a room, she's just like a star. No, she has great personality and always very positive thinking. You know, when we are Asian American, uh, we are with her, she always encourage us. She's always, you know, paying back to the community. Uh, like uh, her father, you know, Dr. James Chow, she the same thing. And I think it's run from the family. Because uh, uh, every time I'm with them, I just feel very, very touched. The way she is, uh, uh, in Chinese saying, is respect the parents, but also very xiao sun. It's just like the way she treat her father, I just feel unbelievable. Even at home, her father kind of teach them, has served tea to the guest. So I think this is a kind of tradition, just like you have mentioned that. I think that the philanthropy part yeah. plays a very significant role in their family. Every single of them, you know, they are doing this. Like uh, uh, her sister, Angela, is doing the same thing. So when Chow Center was established in, uh, at Harvard University, I, I, I participated in the event. And it's just unbelievable. A, a lot of business, successful business people, they want to buy jet, they want to buy some, you know, luxury thing. But for them, they just want to pay back to the community. So I feel it's kind of maybe from the American way, but also I think it's a Chinese way. So I, I just very fortunate to, to see how this lady can uh, balance the Chinese, uh, uh, American and the Western culture. And also, most importantly, you know, they share their stories. I think it's a very inspirational story to our community. I think we should follow, follow that role.